हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर आयुषी पालीवाल फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल ओवरव्यू ऑफ न्यूक्लियर फ्यूल मटेरियल्स पार्ट वन फ्रॉम पेपर एनर्जी रिलेटेड मटेरियल्स सो स्टूडेंट्स let us see what we are going to learn from this module from this module you may get to know about the following first meaning of nuclear fuel second materials available as nuclear fuel for nuclear reactors third current scenario of uranium fuel and the methods of its like mining milling fabrication and enrichment lastly the important properties of uranium as a nuclear fuel so students let us start with a brief introduction of nuclear fuel materials amongst different components of nuclear reactor the reactor core core which is also known as the heart of the reactor contains nuclear fuels a nuclear fuel is a radioactive material that is used to generate nuclear fission reaction which produces huge amount of energy basically heat energy that is utilized to generate electrical power under appropriate conditions the requirement of nuclear fuel are discussed in detail as follows in order to maintain the cost effectiveness of power production the cost of the fuel must be minimum secondly nuclear materials should have high value to thermal conductivity to ensure that they can tolerate the thermal gradients produced between the fuel center and h thirdly nuclear fuel materials must be able to resist repetitive thermal cycling due to the reactors on and off condition nuclear fuel must have high corrosion resistance towards reactor fluids next the fuel should be free from any kind of defect with neutron capture cross section to facilitate the adequate neutron economy another one is that the fuel should have high mechanical strength to sustain mechanical stresses the fuels must be recyclable and or disposal there are majority of materials which can be used as nuclear fuels in nuclear reactors including metal or alloys like uranium plutonium and thorium and ceramics like oxides carbides nitrides and silicides compounds these materials are fabricated as nuclear fuels in various configurations such as cylindrical pellets in the form of rods spherical particles coated particles and in the form of a fluid let us define 
some important basic terms regarding nuclear fuels before we begin with the nuclear fuel. First, burn up. Fuel burn up is an important characteristic of nuclear fuels, which is defined as the quantity of heavy metal in the nuclear fuel that has been fissioned. This term is generally presented as a percentage of heavy metal atoms that have been fissioned or as fission energy gigawatt day. One gigawatt day or GWD is equal to 8.64 multiplied by 10 to the power 13 MWD produced per metric ton of the heavy metal. Second is blanket fuel. It is defined as the reactive fuel that contains the fertile isotopes which are bred into fissile isotopes. Next is driver fuel. It is defined as the reactor fuel that contains the fissile isotopes along with fertile isotopes which are bred into fissile isotopes. Next we will discuss the reproduction factor or RF. It is defined as the number of neutrons or eta generated per neutron absorbed in a fuel. If number of neutrons are produced per fission reaction are nu and the number ratio of fission to absorption in fuel is sigma f divided by sigma a, then reproduction factor can be defined as follows. Eta is equal to sigma f by sigma a multiplied by nu. The value of eta is higher for fast reactor in comparison to thermal reactors. Next is conversion ratio or CR. It is defined as the ability of a nuclear reactor to convert fertile isotopes into fissile isotopes and can be written as follows. That is CR is equal to fissile atoms produced divided by fissile atoms consumed. When CR is greater than 1, it is called as breeding ratio or BR that generally found in case of fast reactors. Next is fission products or FP. Product nuclei resulting either from the fission of heavy elements such as uranium or the radioactive decay of those primary daughters. The fission products can be classified as follows. Fission gases and other volatile elements such as Br, Krypton, Rb, I, Xenon, Cesium and Tellurium. Next is Fp forming precipitates like molybdenum, Tc, ruthenium, Rh, palladium, silver, cadmium, indium, tin, antimony, selenium, tellurium. Next is Fp forming oxide precipitates Rb, strontium, zirconium, niobium, molybdenum, antimony, tellurium, cesium and barium. 
last is fp dissolved as oxides in fuel matrix rb strontium zirconium niobium lanthanum cerium pr nd pm sm and eu last is physium or fs it is nominally 2.4 weight percent molybdenum 1.9 weight percent ru 0.3 percent weight percent rh 0.2 weight percent palladium 0.1 weight percent zirconium and 0.01 weight percent niobium and is designed in such a way that it can mimic noble metal fission products remaining after a simple reprocessing technique based on melt refinement nuclear fuel materials in this slide we will be discussing about various metallic fuel materials the metallic fuel contains materials such as uranium thorium plutonium u and plutonium based fuels were primarily used in ebr first in 1951 to produce suitable amount of electricity further ebr2 magnox and various other fast reactors have also utilized metallic fuels however the water cooled reactors avoid the use of metallic fuels because of the compatibility issues between water and metallic fuel as at higher temperatures the metal fuels could form metal hybrids or oxides nuclear fuels based on metal oxides were chosen by designer in place of metallic fuels as they proposed that metallic fuels would have only limited burn ups because of the apparent swelling issues and expected formation of liquid phases in fuels during the higher temperature processes at that time metal oxide fuels were suggested for reactors even though only less information was available on them after few years the changes in fuel elements design open the gap between the nuclear fuels and cladding materials that gives a plenum volume for gathering fission gases and presented significant improvement 1% versus 20% burn up over the earlier designs however it is noteworthy that research and test reactors have generally used metallic fuels mostly due to their low operation temperature here we will discuss about three major metallic nuclear fuel materials that is uranium plutonium and thorium the fuel materials have various advantages as well as disadvantages over often specific to the type of fuel advantages of metallic fuel is they have high thermal conductivity high fissile atomic density and excellent fabricability while lower melting points air radiation instabilities corrosive nature in reactor fluids and several compatibility problem with the fuel cladding materials are the main disadvantages of metallic fuel however 
metallic fuels in the form of alloys can significantly enhance their corrosion resistance now students we will be discussing about uranium uranium is the most abundant material that has atomic number of 92 and contains a part of about 4 ppm parts per million of the earth's crust the estimated amount of economically recoverable uranium was about 5.5 million tons as estimated in 2007 majority of uranium may be extracted from the earth's crust is called as natural uranium which contains 238u around 99.28% 235u around 0.71% and 236u around which is very much less than that is around 0.006% uranium is generally found in the form of uranium oxide such as triuranium octaoxide and uranium oxide followed by carnotite uranium minerals of high grade are mainly extracted in kazakhstan canada australia namibia south africa niger and some parts of united states and so on as per the estimated made in or estimation which has been made in 2010 kazakhstan is the world's leading country for uranium production that is around 27% followed by canada which is around 20% and australia around 20% however substantial amount of uranium can also produce by recycling the spent fuels collected from nuclear reactor however there are laws which prevents the recycling of these spent nuclear fuels in the united states hence most of the commercial uranium fuels in us are being used after extraction from the minerals but france which utilizes recycled spent fuels for satisfying the fuel requirements now we will discuss about the sources extraction and preparation of uranium uranium is basically found in congo canada us africa ukraine and everywhere to some extent for many decades several methods have been pursued for mining of uranium majority of uranium minerals available in the earth crust contains varieties of impurity materials which are essential to separate from the mineral with a metallic value hence the uranium extraction technique includes mineral beneficiation process process of removing gang of impurity particles to enhance the metal value of the uranium mineral by removing the impurity materials generally the uranium mining is accomplished through chemical methods as physical beneficiation processes are not that effective to release or minerals of value here few common techniques 
for uranium for uranium extraction are discussed in detail in order to recover maximum content of metallic uranium it becomes essential to use leaching reactions of raw ore the leaching is the process of extracting uranium from raw ore by reacting ground uranium ores with dilute acids such as sulfuric acid nitric acid and hydrochloric acid sometimes sodium carbonate is also used as a leaching agent under certain conditions however the ore most often pass through preliminary treatments such as as roasting and grinding prior to leaching which burns carbonaceous species confined within the ore that makes ore more reactive for leaching treatments sometimes the ore is roasted with salts to improve the solubility of impurity metals such as vanadium in the leach solution although the accurate details of the pre treatment procedure are determined by the conditions of the mined uranium the leaching process is carried out by using either an alkaline or acid leaching agent the choice of which is ultimately determined by the economics of the procedure which depends on the nature of the ore it is important to note that acid leaching avails higher recovery of metallic uranium than alkaline leaching however acidic leaching has some limitations as it cannot be used for ores that contain magnesium or calcium carbonates because these compounds have a tendency to react with acid leaching agents which result in the wastage of an excessive amount of acid additionally due to the issue of corrosion the tools and technique used in acid leaching are far more expensive than alkaline leaching as corrosion problems are not so severe in alkaline leaching however the main disadvantage of alkali leaching is their unsuitability of leaching ores containing gypsum sulfide and refractory constituent another important stage after leaching is done is the recovery of metallic uranium from the leach solution which can be accomplished by the methods including chemical precipitation ion exchange and solvent extraction amongst them ion exchange is the most common method used for the recovery of metallic uranium after leaching by sulfuric acid iron exchange method uranyl sulfate ions can be removed selectively by letting them to be adsorbed on iron exchange resin after which the adsorbed ions could be detached from the resin with a solution concentrated with nitrate or chloride ions through this process a yellow powder containing 80 to 85% of uo2 can be achieved this yellow powder is filtered after the dissolving in nitric acid that produced uranyl nitrate which can be extracted with the help of ether after that the filtrate is washed with water several times to produce an aqueous solution from there 
प्योर अमेनियम डाई यूरिनेट कैन बी प्रेसिपिटेटेड बाई पासिंग अमोनिया गैस टू सेपरेट डाई यूरिनेट द डाई यूरिनेट इज देन ड्राइड एंड रिड्यूज टू यूरेनियम डाई ऑक्साइड इन हाइड्रोजन एट सिक्स फिफ्टी डिग्री सेल्शियस द अमोनियम डाई यूरिनेट कैन ऑल्सो बी कन्वर्टेड टू यूरेनियम ट्राई ऑक्साइड बाई हीटिंग दैट रिमूव्स अमोनिया एंड वेपर आफ्टर विच यूरेनियम ट्राई ऑक्साइड इज ट्रीटेड विद हाइड्रोजन एट अप्रॉक्सीमेटली सिक्स हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्शियस टू क्रिएट यूरेनियम डाई ऑक्साइड नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज टू कन्वर्ट एंड द एनरिचमेंट ऑफ यूरेनियम द अमाउंट यूरेनियम ऑक्साइड अचीव्ड आफ्टर यूरेनियम मिलिंग प्रैक्टिकली नॉट यूजबल एज अ न्यूक्लियर फ्यूल फॉर अ न्यूक्लियर रिएक्टर दस इट रिक्वायर्स एडिशनल प्रोसेसिंग इट इज नोट वर्थी दैट पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट ऑफ नेचुरल यूरेनियम इज केपेबल ऑफ अंडर गोइंग फिजन और फिजाइल इन नेचर एंड इट इज फाउंड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ टू थर्टी फाइव यू एंड द रिमेंडर इज यूरेनियम टू थर्टी एट यू हेंस फॉर बेटर फ्यूल क्वालिटी फॉर सेवरल न्यूक्लियर रिएक्टर्स द कंसनट्रेशन ऑफ द फिजाइल आइसोटोप needs to be increased that is typically to be between 3.5% and 5% of 235u enrichment is the physical process to increase the concentration of isotopes which require the uranium to be in a gaseous form in this process the uranium oxide concentrate is first converted to uranium hexafluoride ready for enrichment plant after that uranium hexafluoride is then sapped into 14 ton cylinders where it solidifies and shipped to the enrichment plant in enrichment plant the gaseous uranium hexafluoride gets separated into two streams by enrichment process where one enriched to the required level and is known as low enriched uranium and the other stream is progressively depleted in 235u and is called as tails or simply depleted uranium majority of enrichment process in commercial plants uses centrifuges with high rpm values for vertical tube where the physical properties of molecules separate them due to high spin finally they are allowed to laser enrich enrichment process and the product of this stage is called as enriched uranium hexafluoride which is reconverted to produce enriched uranium oxide up to this point the fuel material can be considered fungible finally let us discuss about the fabrication of uranium the nuclear in nuclear reactor is generally supplied in the form of ceramic pellets which are prepared from uranium oxide sintered at a high temperature of about 1400 degrees celsius the fuel pellets are covered in strong metal tubes to produce fuel rods which are organized into a fuel assembly ready for place into a nuclear reactor the size or dimensions of the fuel pellets and other parts of the fuel assembly are accurately controlled to ensure the steadiness in nature of the nuclear fuel the size and the shape of processing vessels are taken very precisely with great care to avoid criticality of limited chain reaction releasing radiation however 
fuel criticality is unlikely with low enriched fuel but it highly considerable for the plants handling special fuels for research reactors some 27 tons of fresh enriched fuel is required each year by a 1000 megawatt reactor further the fabrication of uranium is decided by various factors such as its reaction affinity with air and hydrogen and n isotropic properties however various techniques including rolling forging casting extrusion swaging wire and tube drawing machining and powder metallurgy can be used for the fabrication of uranium now let us discuss about the physical properties of uranium and a little bit discussion about its crystal structure in spite of being a metal uranium has features of chemical bonding of metalloids such as arsenic antimony or bismuth the crystal structure of uranium changes for various temperature ranges up to a temperature range of 666 degree celsius it adopts an orthorhombic crystal structure that is alpha u which has four atoms per unit cell 19.04 g per centimeter cube of density and lattice constant of around 2.8541 plus minus 0.003 armstrong and b equal to 5.8692 plus minus 0.0015 armstrong and c equal to 4.9563 plus minus 0.004 armstrong the structure can be described as a stacks of corrugated sheets with atoms arranged parallel to ac plane with an atomic separation of around 2.8 armstrong within the sheets where the sheets are separated by a distance of around 3.3 armstrong this structure can be defined as distorted hexagonal close packed structure within the temperature of 666 to 771 degree celsius it shows a complex tetragonal structure that is beta u which has 30 atoms per unit cell now for a temperature range of 771 to 100 and 1130 means 1130 degree celsius it has simple body centered cubic crystal structure denoted by gamma u which has two atoms per unit cell due to anisotropy in crystal structure of alpha u its properties such as thermal expansion coefficients are anomalous along the crystallographic directions as discussed earlier uranium displaced allotropic transformations hence it shows increased volumetric thermal expansion coefficients because phase transformation takes place as a function of temperature further thermal conductivity is also an important property when it comes to heat transfer mechanism in a nuclear reactor the figure shows the variation in thermal conductivity of well annealed high purity polycrystalline uranium with temperature it is noteworthy that the thermal conductivity of uranium keeps on increasing with increase in temperature and provides the advantage of superior heat conduction at elevated temperature next we are going to discuss the mechanical properties of uranium pure uranium is a partially ductile material whose mechanical properties depends on crystallographic directions 
or texture which is ultimately affected by the fabrication history and heat treatment besides this grain size and shape also affect its mechanical properties significantly the tensile strength and modulus are sensitive to impurities atoms such as carbon fission products and alloying alloying elements the figure shows a typical stress strain curve of the uranium and the below table shows the tensile strength decreases precipitously with temperature uranium is a material which is highly prone to corrosion in most environments so now we will be discussing the corrosion properties of uranium so uranium gets corroded in the environments such as air oxygen hydrogen water water vapor etc freshly polished surface of uranium which has a dull silvery color changes to straw like color and blue black color within few days when it is exposed to air the oxide films produced on its surface are not quite protective however at elevated temperature the oxide film thickness increases with time which starts cracking and exposing pure uranium metal under the oxide film unalloyed uranium shows highly corrosive nature in water as shown in the figure within 50 to 70 degree celsius the originally formed uranium dioxide film protects metal uranium for a significant period of time however as temperature increases beyond 70 degree celsius corrosion rate also increases on the other hand in degassed water that means hydrogen saturated the corrosion rates remain linear with time in the significant temperature range it is assumed that in degassed water hydrogen diffuses through the oxide film to form uranium hydride uh3 in between the oxide and the metal and also into the grain boundaries of uranium which adequately protects from the corrosion of metal uranium now we will be discussing about the alloying of uranium alloying of uranium is generally done to improve its properties such as mechanical dimensional and corrosion resistance however the choice of alloying elements is not supposed to affect the neutron economy thus the lots of emphasis various emphasis was placed on the alloying elements such as aluminium be and zirconium the alloying materials such as titanium zirconium niobium and molybdenum they have broad solid solubility in uranium at elevated temperatures vanadium and chromium they have reasonable solubility and tantalum and tungsten they have least solubility in gamma uranium the alloyed uranium such as u m o u zirconium and u p u zirconium fuels was used in e b r first which showed significant improvement in dimensional stability under irradiation 
and corrosion resistance. Further, the uranium alloys based on fissium UFS or UFZ that is fissium are being used in LMFBRs. Uranium fissium are produced while reprocessing of spent fuels in which amount of the fission products like molybdenum, niobium, zirconium, RH and rudenium etc are left in the uranium matrix. These uranium alloys shows better irradiation stability. Besides the excellent stability, alloyed uranium shows high strength at elevated high temperature strength, which is very, very advantageous as the strength of uranium decreases drastically at elevated temperatures. However, inclusion of large amounts of alloying materials in uranium may result in its brittle formation, which adversely affects the ductility and fabricability of the alloyed uranium. Another route of hardening the uranium alloys is its martinistic transformation. So students, let us summarize what we have learnt in this module. In this lecture, we discussed half content of the nuclear fuel materials, which covered an introductory description of nuclear fuel materials and its important characteristics. Also, this lecture covered a detailed discussion of most of the important nuclear fuel materials that is uranium and its various properties. Thank you.